India and China have just shaken hands to at least try and normalize their disputed border and the big military standoff in eastern Ladakh. But remember, the battle for the Indian Ocean is still very much wide open. And one of the instruments that India has lagged behind China in a huge way in has been nuclear-powered attack submarines. These are described by maritime experts as the true arbiters of sea power. These are submarines that have nearly limitless endurance. They're fast, they're incredibly stealthy, and India doesn't have a single one, while China has several and is constantly building more. The good news now is that work has begun. The government has finally signed off and sanctioned funds for India to develop and build its first two nuclear Sharks. Take a look. They're the ultimate symbols of underwater muscle. Nuclear-powered attack submarines. Let's call them sharks. In the fleets of every major navy in the world, including the United States, Russia, China, France and the UK. With Australia and Brazil soon to get their own as well. But India, even with an enormous maritime domain to protect and major threats in the Indian Ocean, doesn't have a fleet of its own nuclear sharks. But now, after years in uncertainty, the government has finally flagged off a homegrown project. Nearly 40,000 crore rupees have now been sanctioned for the development and construction of two made in India nuclear sharks. These will be the first two of at least six that the Navy hopes to operate. The good news is, India's nuclear submarine building program already has valuable experience. The Indian Navy currently operates two homegrown nuclear-powered submarines, INS Arihant and INS Arighat. Both are boomers slang for nuclear-powered ballistic missile submarines, lumbering beasts of the deep that carry long-range nuclear-tipped missiles, only entering the proverbial fight in the event of a nuclear attack on India. If the boomers are akin to bombers, the nuclear sharks now cleared for development are more like fighters, agile, swift and deployed by the Navy for everyday submarine operations. The question obviously arises, how are nuclear-powered attack submarines different from the submarines that India currently operates? The obvious first difference is that while the current submarines operated by the Indian Navy are powered by diesel engines and batteries, the nuclear sharks will be powered by a miniature nuclear reactor. Unlike diesel-electric submarines, which are limited by fuel capacity and battery life, Nuclear sharks enjoy virtually unlimited range, only needing to head to a port for food or human supplies. Unlike diesel-electric submarines, which are vulnerable and noisy during battery recharge, nuclear sharks can operate quietly for extended periods without surfacing. Diesel-electric submarines may be able to stay underwater for a few days max, but nuclear sharks can stay submerged for months together if necessary. Nuclear sharks are more expensive to buy, but pay off in all the other ways described above. India's submarine force levels have been critically low for years now, making clearance for the nuclear shark program hugely welcome. But the Indian Navy has operated nuclear sharks in the past, except they were on lease from Russia. The first, INS Chakra, was a Charlie-class submarine that operated from 1987 to 1991. The second, also named INS Chakra, was a Russian Akula-class submarine that operated for a decade from 2011 to 2021. 
The Indian nuclear sharks to be built will be 6,000 ton boats powered by pressure water nuclear reactors and will be armed with torpedoes, anti-ship and land attack cruise missiles. Aimed to be the pinnacle of Indian naval capability with versatility in both offensive and defensive roles, these silent hunters will stalk enemy vessels, including surface ships and submarines, without being detected. If hostilities break out, these submarines will be able to also launch precise strikes on land targets using cruise missiles. This gives them an edge in both naval battles and land attack missions, further enhancing India's combat capabilities. Given China's aggressive nuclear submarine building program and a periodic attempt to push them into the Indian Ocean, only an Indian nuclear shark fleet will put the Indian Navy in a position to meaningfully push back. So the good news is that India is finally in line to get its own homegrown nuclear sharks. That is, nuclear-powered attack submarines. A veteran submariner once called them the real arbiters of sea power. And we're going to try and understand why this is such an important occasion and why the clearance for this project is one of the biggest milestones as far as Indian sea power is concerned. Joining us on this special episode of Battle Cry is Commodore Anil Jaising. He's a veteran submariner of the Indian Navy and also vice president now of the Indian Maritime Foundation. Captain DK Sharma is a former spokesperson of the Indian Navy and now a commentator and consultant with Bharat Shakti. Gentlemen, thank you very much for being with me. Commodore Jaising, I'd like to start with you uh, by asking you why nuclear-powered attack submarines uh, are so important to a maritime force like the Indian Navy. We constantly hear that, uh, you know, these are the real arbiters of sea power and they've been elusive for so long. The Indian Navy has wanted them for a very long time. They've finally been sanctioned as a program now. Why is this so important? Why does the Navy need them so much? Well, I think this is one of the most welcome developments anyone in the Navy would... Uh would agree. Uh, we have been, I think, we, we've been wanting uh, nuclear attack submarines since day before yesterday, mm -hmm. not even today. And this program has been talked about for a long time. The very fact, as you mentioned, that we've been, we operated our first SSN INS Chakra way back in the late 80s, indicates that the, the intention of going nuclear in our submarine capability was always there. There were perhaps sort of other constraints which prevented us from going that far. Mm. And I think the focus being I'll come back to you, Commodore Jaising. I think we've lost that audio with you. Let me bring in Captain D.K. Sharma in the meantime. Uh, Captain Sharma, will you take that question? Why is this such an important occasion for the Indian Navy? Why has the Indian Navy wanted these submarines for such a long time, sir? Shiv, there's a problem with the audio. There is a problem with the audio. I'm, I'm not able to hear you. Can you hear me? What a pity. We'll, we'll try and... I can hear you. If you can hear me, go ahead, sir. Commodore Jaising, can you hear me? I can, I can hear you. Can yeah, you go hear ahead. Me? We lost that link, unfortunately. We're going to try and get our technicians to fix that. But please go ahead, sir. Yeah. So as I was saying, the Indian Navy has always, or the government of the country has always felt the need for nuclear submarines. And it's not now. It's, it's a four-decade-old sto story, with Chakra having come way back in 1988, and the crews for that having started the training in 1985. But obviously, for reasons best known, and you know, I'm sure for very good reason, this capability was not... Uh, developed over the years. But over the years, with the nature of the maritime threat having changed so much and the Indian Ocean having now become critical and the pivot in the future great power contestation that's going to happen, I think India as a predominant maritime power in the Indian Ocean has to ensure that it always retains the combat edge or the competitive edge or whatever you may like to call, call it. And for that, as a Navy which claims to be a well-balanced, multi-dimensional blue water Navy, the SSN or the nuclear attack submarine is an absolutely uh, necessary imperative. Yes. Uh, you would be aware that we had a 30-year submarine plan for conventional submarine building. You were also aware 2015 a study was uh, approved by the CCS for initial design capability for an SSN, which was successfully completed. 
and thereafter the 30 year submarine plan for 24 conventional submarines was modified to right. 18 conventional submarines and six SSNs. So obviously the intention was there and we were all wondering why it's taken so long since then for the CCS to finally give approval to get the program off the ground. Mm. Uh, from, a, from a maritime security power perspective, I think India needs these submarines very desperately. Yeah. We are a carrier operating Navy. We have to retain the edge. And we are also aware, as you mentioned, that very soon the PLN Navy, which is building sub nuclear submarine capability very rapidly, they've already got six and they intend, how many they actually build, we'll see, but they intend to have 12 to 15 SSNs by 2030. Yeah. Once they have 12 to 15 SSNs in their, in their arsenal, you can be rest assured that three or four will definitely be deployed in the Indian Ocean. Because by then we also expect that China with its three or four aircraft carriers, which it will have by then, will probably deploy a, deploy a carrier battle group in the Indian Ocean uh, besides, besides its other, other ships that it already has. And therefore, uh, carrier capabilities supported by nuclear attack submarines would be a very formidable yes. uh, threat to India's, uh, you know, so far unchallenged position in the Indian Ocean. And the very presence of SSNs in, a, in an open ocean area even though they, you know, the oceans are vast, mm. but for a large surface force, it is a threat. And definitely it restricts the options of the surface forces to operate unchecked, unhindered, uh, if they know that there's an S there could be an SSN lurking around anywhere. The advantages that SSNs bring with the unlimited speed and endurance Correct. is that they can be rapidly redeployed wherever required. Yeah. To shadow a force, to follow a force, to, to detect a force, or to just go and interdict a force. Mm. So it is very important that if we have to retain the edge, we should also be able to put the PLA Navy under a similar kind of pressure yeah. as we would perhaps face when their assistance operate. And therefore, can you, it is very important. Commodore Jaising, can you explain that, you know, what you just said in a, uh, for, for a minute? Because, uh, uh, you know, our viewers would be very interested to uh, get into the details of what you just mentioned. You know, when you said that uh, the, the surface fleet of the Chinese will think twice about entering a certain area if they know that there is an Indian... Uh, you know, nuclear powered attack submarine in the area. What goes on in the minds of that surface fleet? What is the danger? Why is it such a daunting proposition? You know, the hydrology in Indian waters inherently favors submarine operations. Mm. <clears throat> the temperature profile and the velocity, sound velocity profile is of benefit because the water gets cooler as we go deeper, benefits the submarine. So right. a submarine to be able to detect a, detect a surface force much before the surface force would be able to detect a submarine. And particularly when we have, let's say, a carrier battle group of eight or ten or twelve ships, now that makes a lot. They make a lot of noise mm. in the water, and a submarine gets a tremendous range advantage. Now, once a, a large carrier force gets a whiff of a fact that there could be a nuclear submarine operating somewhere near them, they could be rest assured that the nuclear submarine would have detected them, mm. and that will put a lot of pressure on the on the surface navy captains to initiate anti-submarine warfare measures. Which would restrict their otherwise they correct keep it unchallenged in the oceans. And while the Chinese SSNs could do that to our carrier battle group, we must have a similar capability. Let's say if we deploy an SSN, let's say in the Horn of Africa, we know the carrier battle group, Chinese PLA Navy battle group might be operating off Djibouti mm. because that's where we think they'll probably be based. Mm. If we can if if the Chinese get an idea that there's perhaps an SSN somewhere in the Horn of Africa which is operating an Indian SSN, they would be I mean, it may not constrain them in the sense that it's not that they won't sail, but they'll definitely be doubly careful before they take any such action which could prove detrimental to their uh, surface forces. Yeah. So I think from that perspective, the SSN becomes very, very potent because of its speed, its unlimited endurance, its stealth, and its weaponry. Most importantly, its weaponry. The second big advantage it has, it has land attack capability and its cruise missiles. So let's say we have a we have a continental uh, uh, opponent. Let's say like like a western neighbor, from six or seven hundred miles away, we could open a, a new front for his land forces from the sea. An attack could come from the sea with, without them knowing where it's coming from, because the submarine would, would be anywhere underwater. It has high speeds; it can redeploy very rapidly. So, personally, if you ask me, I would have thought the CCS would perhaps approve all six. Yeah, and they would have said that they can be built in tranches of two or tranches, tranches of three. So I'm a little uh, surprised why they only approved two at, at, the, at the first go. Because it's not only about the sub number of submarines. Correct. It's about creating the ecosystem for building these submarines. Mm. So once you say I'm going to have six, it encourages industry also to make the necessary investment to ensure that because they're going to provide whatever they're going to make, 
for six submarines and maybe more later. But now in batches of two, you're not sure when the next two will be ordered or when the two after that will be ordered. So th that could be a little bit of a of an inhibiting factor in 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 encouraging industry to make the right investment because these are going to be indigenously built submarines. Absolutely. We're not going to use any foreign assistance in them. So from both an industrial and technological perspective, as well as from the force level perspective of the Navy, we know we need six. The government has sort of tacitly acknowledged we need six, but to build in tranches of two may be a little... Okay, okay. May not be the best... Let, uh, me, let, let, let me bring Captain Sharma in also. I think we've uh, fixed that link with Captain Sharma. I hope you can hear me, sir. Go ahead. My question to you was, yeah. why has it taken so long? You know, better late than never, obviously, when it comes to such equipment. But your assessment of this, two have been cleared. There's a larger plan to build six. It's going to take a while to catch up with the Chinese, but at least now things are moving. Well, Shiv, good evening to you. Sorry, I was having some problem with the audio. Anyways, yes. I will take on from where you have left. Uh, Shiv, I will just take uh, 30 seconds. Yes. The 30-year 30, 30 submarine building plan, which was approved by the CCS in 98-99, it uh, divided the boats into 675, that is Project Scorpion, which is finishing now with the commissioning of Vagshir, end of the month, end yes. of December. Then we have... 675 India, where TKMS and Navantia are at the final stages. Who gets it? We don't know. Then was the project 76, which was 12 boats. In 2015, the then Raksha, uh, Raksha Mantri, Shri Manohar Parikar, he had split this 12 boats into six SSNs and six uh, to be made in India 100%. So that was termed as project 76 and project 77. Now, as Sir uh, Commodore A.J. Singh is saying, yes, we have got AON for six, but financial approval for two. So to start with, we are going ahead with two. And uh, I'm very sure that the ecosystem knows it, understands it, because it was a huge amount of money. So it will only be one third of it when we start with two boats. And these two boats are also going to take at least a decade, yes. at least a decade. So we have the plans. What I understand, what I have been made to understand is that the CCS AON is for six, mm. but financial approval as of now for two. is for two. So it will go ahead and there is no doubt about it. And parallelly, we will also, we are also going ahead with project 76. So insofar as this 24 boats, mm. they will plug in the gaps. Yes, there are capability gaps, but uh, soon you will find, and the, you know, in building submarines and all, it will take some time, Yeah, but the, the SSBNs are online, you know it. S2, S3, S4, S4 yep. star. Yes. So things things are getting into place. And our SBC is doing a wonderful job. The Indian industry is chipping in is more than required. Yes. And of course, the SP model, the strategic partnership model of 75 India is uh, likely to I mean, to start any time. Mm. Maybe another two, three months, four months. But, but so Captain Sharma... Captain Sharma, does this, yeah. you know, with, with the launch of the fourth SSBN, the nuclear powered ballistic missile submarine, and, you know, project sanction for the, uh, the nuclear powered attack submarine program, uh, does this uh, uh, indicate that India has now achieved a kind of rhythm as far as the know how is concerned of building these submarines? Shiv, there is no doubt about it. You see the speed with which things are happening. Yeah. Of course, it is not in the open domain and it should not be also. Correct. Because once the boats are getting uh, commissioned, it is being put out by the government of India. But insofar as the speed and the confidence, which are, you know, now our constructors, our SBC, the ATV, the private players, everybody is chipping in and it is happening at a breakneck speed, but it takes time. It's a very, very complex machine and it takes time. It has to go through various safety checks and uh, sir knows it well, um, Commodore AJ, that the most complex thing which you ever build is a submarine. So it will take time, but then once they are out, they are out forever. Very, very interesting. And uh, this is something we're looking forward to very keenly and we'll be tracking. Obviously, very little of it is going to be in the public domain. Whatever little that is tantalizingly comes out and we're able to discuss in this manner, uh, we will look at in a very, very serious way as we always do on India Today and on Battle Cry. Commodore Anil Jai Singh and Captain DK Sharma, thank you very much for being with us on this special episode, one that I... Uh, have enjoyed putting together for all of our viewers because remember that India has approved the building of the first two nuclear-powered attack submarines. But as our guests also mentioned, there's been some very welcome uh, forward movement 
in the nuclear-powered ballistic missile program as well. In fact, India's fourth nuclear-powered ballistic missile submarine, referred to very mysteriously as S-4 Star, was launched into the water at the shipbuilding center in Vishakapatnam last week. Obviously, there are no images of that. It's completely classified. The submarine is bigger and more capable than the current uh, two boomers, as they're called, in service, INS Arihant and INS Arighat. Uh, and this particular submarine comes after what is called the S-4 or Aridaman, which will be commissioned into the Indian Navy next year. The S-4 Star carries advanced 3,500-kilometer range submarine-launched ballistic missiles like the K-4, which will be tested very soon. So that's another big development, clear indication that India's nuclear-powered submarine program is booming from all sides.